losing soil as you above all know, um, and climate change accelerates that loss. It could be gone in 50 years. Jeremy Grantham sets the stage for us well here by uh, adding an element of amplified effects of climate change on soil erosion. And um, you know, the simple answer is, is, the nuanced answer is we need small diverse farms and forests and local economies and everyone in investing in them to cool the planet, increase food security. The way that um, animals are treated, the way that food is raised, the way that, that, that chicken and pork and beef are raised, they're raised on these things called CAFOs, concentrated animal feedlots. And there's a lot of things going on there that are very problematic. First off, the animals, just in terms of just the animal rights, they're just packed together. You know, second of all, all of the manure coming out of there flows generally into rivers and then causes balloons. And so we said, how are we going to get after this? So what we decided to do was to um, talk to some of the big companies that buy poultry and talk to them about the fact that they're giving these chickens antibiotics in order to keep them so packed tightly together so they don't get sick. And what that did is, well, first of all, we talked to McDonald's and we got, um, took a couple of years uh, to get McDonald's to agree that this was a problem. Now we do that through filing a shareholder resolution. So every shareholder who owns $2,000 worth of a company for one year has the right to file a document with the company and say, I think this is a problem and I want you to have this voted on by all the other shareholders. Glyphosate is the world's most used herbicide. It's Roundup, and you probably know it mostly from GMOs, but the actual, we, we wrote a report about this about a year ago. Um, you know, GMOs are plants that are engineered to resist Roundup so that you can plant your field of corn, plant your field of soy, and when the plants are yay high, you can spray it aerially and it'll kill all the weeds can grow. Now, that's bad for the water systems, it's bad for all the adjacent communities, it's bad for the farm workers because this thing is a very, very toxic endocrine disruptor. But now they've started spraying it on wheat, it's a non-GMO crop, on oats and on beans, but they spray it right before it's, it's um, harvested, so maybe a week or two before it's harvested to what's called desiccate the crops. So it's gotten into our food system. There is about 17 times as much glyphosate in the U.S. flour as, as in Europe because they don't, they don't allow it to be used. There's a recent study that says, showed that 93% of pregnant women had glyphosate in their system. And it's leading, they believe, to shorter pregnancies, to all kinds of problems. Um, it's also just been named as a carcinogen by the World Health Organization and by the state of California. We come up with a strategy along the, these issues around in particular, I've just talked about the food systems. We also work on climate change, and we've been filing resolutions with Exxon, Chevron, all those guys. We also just you know, filed all the utilities about coal. We work on human rights, on, um, on slavery and forced labor and supply chain. And then we also work on ocean plastics. And just, just a little note on ocean plastics. It's actually all very connected because we also work on hydraulic fracturing. So, when you frack gas, you're going to be using lots of water, like four million gallons each well. You're also going to be getting this toxic, you're putting toxics down into, into the fracking hole. The wastewater comes up and it's got to be stored, so you're, you're hurting the waste, all the water systems are getting destroyed in fracking. The gas that comes out then goes to a plant called a cracker, an ethane cracker plant, where they break the gas into ethane, methane, butane. Those are all the feedstocks for plastic. Then you get the plastic and you're encouraged to throw away single-use plastic and a lot of it goes into the ocean. So this is a way for the oil companies to create demand for their products because people aren't buying oil that much anymore. Like 90% of people's investments go into these 401k plans. A mutual fund is just a basket of stocks and most people do not have any idea what's in those stocks. And we, we've built a lot of tools now, so you can go to fossil free funds, plug in any mutual fund, and it'll tell you exactly what fossil fuel companies you own, what palm oil, what companies that are, are raising the rainforest. We also look at weapons, if you care about nukes, cluster munitions, or landmines. And we are going to be coming out with one in November that'll show you the gender equality that these, each company in the fund you know, is, is doing. So, there are now tools for the first time, so you can actually know what you own, and if you can direct 
your capital, where you want it. You can actually create a world that is one that you want to live in. There's about, a, I mean, there's almost a trillion dollars of endowment capital in the United States. If you take the private foundations together with the donor advised funds, I mean, there's half a million donor advised fund accounts. And that's like Fidelity Charitable and the San Francisco Community Foundation and Impact Assets and, 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 and all over the country um, that add up to about a hundred of that, a hundred billion of that um, uh, one trillion dollars. If you have um, localized interests in terms of soil and ag that you can actually put money <coughs> directly into, into uh, whether it's a loan to a small farmer group or, or, or a, a, a fair trade harvest finance cycle in the developing world on a commodity or, uh, or cooperative uh, farmers who are, who are working in, um, in, in an emerging market or you're doing something like an, uh, an ag tech deal like a pasture map that there's all of these like inter interventions that are really really um, kind of you know cogent and uh, and where you can see and touch the the impact and the entrepreneurs and I think we're going to talk about this um, but the the idea that you can actually do that and create facilities where communities of people can come together and aggregate into some of those deals it's real like we can do it just like we can stand up and say soil not oil and you know and vote our shares. I mean I think we have to do it at all these different altitudes and, um, and I think we need to demand it of the trapped philanthropic assets across the United States that's trillion or 882 billion or something. Capital is not only money which comes under assets but it's intelligence, education, experience, the ability to enroll, the ability to teach natural capital and time. And we all have some of those. We keep thinking, why are you talking about investment? I don't have any money to invest. You do too. You have plenty of assets to invest. And what was really missing in food farming and finance was infrastructure, local infrastructure. And so I only invest in local food farming and finance infrastructure. And I invested in a very particular way I invested with my returns on investment being what I call, and I'm not wedded to this name, but being what I call community benefits return on investment. And the little logo says food and eaters, carbon in the ground, and resilience. And so those due diligence criteria are the ones that I use for my direct personal investments. One of the things that's really missing is access to land. Farmers have no access to land, it's all real estate priced. Ooh, they don't have um, a succession. So last June, Land for Good held the first national succession conference. It was amazing. There is an immense amount of data coming out in tools to help you connect the dots and see the dots to feel the power, whether you are a shareholder um, for a long time or just becoming one and realizing your freedom to exert your power as an owner, um, you are an important part of that and we are going to be um, more able to rebuild the soil, to cool the climate, absorb the carbon and increase food security if you're part of it.